Overwatch 2's development is going fantastic. Couldn't be better. All you need to do is just put aside a few little things like um, Battle for Azeroth being an absolute shit show of an expansion, so them not taking player feedback from the beta at all, and just releasing the game as is from that anyway. To the point where the game's director even had to uh, issue an official apology about how bad the game was um, and about how bad their communication was as well. It's pretty bad. Um, Mike Morheim, one of the original co-founders of the Blizzard studio, deciding to bail after 27 years. The blood sort of in the water at that point. Um, the panel of WoW figureheads being outright assholes to a guy in their audience and sort of just insulting his intelligence by saying that he thought he wanted WoW Classic, but really he, he doesn't. Then only to release WoW Classic not too long after that to a fair, fair bit of success. Uh, have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. And, and by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. Then Diablo Immortal sort of screwed over longtime fans of the series, um, a PC series, mind you, to shield to the international mobile phone gaming market instead, with the infamous tagline from Wyatt Chen, do you guys not have phones? Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Have phones. Uh, what do you have next? Um, oh right, yeah, Blizzard decided to kill off the entire pro scene that had developed around their MOBA, Heroes of the Storm. Every pro team, every player, every person who worked on the series, like the casters, production staff, support staff, finding out like just just before the 2019 series that um, you know was expected to start. You guys don't have jobs. We're putting the game you've dedicated your careers to on life support. Sorry about the loud notice. Screw you. No one was given notice, I mean, like, literally. They just pulled the plug. Screw you. Uh, fast forward a little bit to Blizzard employees getting the sack over not being team players. That's quote-unquote. If you can't tell, I'm being heavily sarcastic. Um, yeah, not, not being team players when, in fact, they were subjected to, like, such vulgar racial abuse that they were diagnosed with major depression and severe anxiety attacks. Not being a team player. Um, Blizzard sacking around 800 staff while their CEO raked in big million dollar ass bonuses year after year sort of maintaining that even though he was getting these bonuses they couldn't afford to pay their staff then they banned a Hearthstone pro for having the audacity to be upset that Blizzard laid off his wife a lot of heart from the studio in that one um, another co-founder Frankie Pierce um, stepped down after 28 years I mean you can, you can kind of get why um, it'd be really hard to watch this baby, your baby, um, in the studio develop to such an amazing reputation and then become basically a drunk frat boy rapist of the development, the video game development world, really. Uh, what else? Uh, the Blitzchung Hearthstone controversy that they were actually forced to backflip on once they realized that people buying and playing their games were actual humans who felt empathy. That one was not great. Um, Warcraft 3 Reforged, that's a big one. Uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged is potentially the worst re-release of a video game in the history of the universe. Um, and it was subject to some pretty flagrant false advertising. What's that thing like emus and ostriches do where when something happens they just stick their head in the sand until it goes away? That's pretty much what Blizzard did in response to how bad Warcraft 3 Reforged was. That, that was great. Um, sort of more frat boy blizzard behavior wherein they finally sack wow developer alex um Afraziabi, who he really couldn't just stop sexually assaulting people in his office um, i mean i'm glad they sacked him but um he was he was there for a while before, before they got rid of him uh, there's that thing where the blizzard employees uh, were sort of up in arms about sharing like they shared their pay scales with each other and through that found out how much blizzard was screwing them over whilst the CEO, Bobby K, was raking in big bucks and they weren't. Um, there's a super big one for Overwatch in Jeff goddamn Gaplin leaving Blizzard. Jeff left Blizzard. Literally the last strand of goodwill for the company, um, and the, the game had in, in general really, leaves the studio. 
Don't forget that Jeff Kaplan is the reason that you didn't have to buy each hero in Overwatch 1 and was the biggest voice in the room for you getting to carry over your skins from the first game to the second game without having to buy them all over again. He was literally the only reason that people still tolerated Blizzard in any capacity um, and he just had enough and, and left. Um, what else we got? Overwatch 2 gets changed to 5v5, eliminating the off-tank role altogether, sort of devastating the established pro scene and pro, pro players that have dedicated their professional lives to the game in that role. In a change that no one really asked for, no one was really talking about before it happened, um, and by the reaction of the internet at large, no one really likes either. It kind of seems like the sequel is a straight downgrade for pro and casual players alike, but with a story mode, so yes. Um, then the release date of Overwatch 2 gets like very little information or it's pushed away or it's vaguely swept under the carpet, meaning that Overwatch 1 has been abandoned without any content or meaningful patches for longer and longer. Um, there's the most recent one, the most obvious one, um, and the one you're most likely going to be familiar with um, in the state of California actually filing a lawsuit, Blizzard being sued after a two year investigation into the sort of disgusting lengths of sexual assault and harassment that the company let fly for like forever and a day to the point where 2,500 of their own employees wrote an open letter to the company condemning the disgusting behavior the Blizzard leadership knew about and just let slide anyway. But like, I mean, if you just ignore all that stuff, just, just, just put it to the side in your mind, pretend like the last four or five years haven't made Blizzard sort of this egregious burden on humanity well, then the development of Overwatch 2 is going great. They have hit this one little snafu, though. Little thing. Um, in that sources inside the development team for Overwatch 2 have let it slip that the game's launch really isn't likely to happen until 2023. Meaning the gap between Blizzard abandoning Overwatch 1 and the release date of Overwatch 2, well, yeah, it gets a fair bit larger. The actual quote is, oh, hang on. From what I can gather, a launch in 2022 no longer seems likely. Now at face value, this might seem like a pretty bad thing, especially if you're looking forward to the game. But in truth, there's not much to look forward to, and not many people are looking forward to it anymore, so it's no biggie. Apart from that, development on Overwatch 2 is going great. 